Okay, this video is going to look at the health-related components of fitness. Uh, this is the first dot point for what is the uh, for the critical question: what is the relationship between physical fitness, training, and movement efficiency? The syllabus for this dot point asks you to learn about cardiorespiratory endurance, muscular strength, muscular endurance, flexibility, and body composition. You'll learn too to go along with this. Ask you to analyze the relationship between physical fitness and movement efficiency, and you're going to do that by considering the question: to what degree is fitness? A predictor of performance. Uh, you also have to learn to measure and analyze a range of both health related and skill related components of physical fitness and you also need to think critically about the purpose and benefits of testing physical fitness. Okay so the health related components of fitness are essentially going to be the foundational components of fitness. These are the ones that are going to form the basis for any kind of training for any sport to get the athlete ready to go uh, normally focused on in the pre-season. Cardiorespiratory endurance is also known as cardiovascular endurance or as aerobic fitness. Uh, this refers to the body's ability to maintain movement for an extended period of time. Uh, it is essentially your heart, lungs, blood vessels uh, and your muscles all working together to absorb, deliver and utilize oxygen in the production of energy which enables you to move. Uh, so in other words, this is how well the cardiorespiratory system works which you learned about in the last critical question. Uh, the cardiorespiratory endurance is all about delaying fatigue. Uh, it allows uh, for a higher intensity to be maintained for longer when it comes to performance. Uh, when you try and measure cardiorespiratory uh, endurance, uh, you're gonna try and use something like a beep test or you might do a VO2 max test. When we come to muscular strength, uh, muscular strength is the maximal amount of force that a muscle can produce in one contraction. Okay, so don't get it confused with muscular endurance. Muscular strength is one contraction and it's a maximal contraction. Uh, greater strength means less effort is needed in order to produce particular movements and to produce a given amount of force. Uh, so that obviously is uh, beneficial in performance because you are perceiving uh, to be exerting yourself at a lower rate. Uh, so a rate of perceived uh, effort relates closely to fatigue and so muscular strength improve, uh, improves movement efficiency by delaying fatigue. Uh, it can also improve technique and reduce the chances of injury to the athlete. Uh, muscular strength is measured by doing a 1RM or repetition maximum or you can use a dynamometer uh, to do some testing. Muscular endurance on the other hand is a muscles or a group of muscles ability to repeat a specific movement over and over again. Uh, muscular endurance is tested using how many times an athlete can perform a specific movement in a set time. Uh, so for example you might do push-ups or sit-ups, how many can you do in one minute? Muscular endurance improves uh, your body's movement efficiency because it helps to delay fatigue. Um, particularly the fatigue that's that burning fatigue in the anaerobic system, particularly that lactic acid buildup. Uh, so if you have good muscular endurance, that uh, lactic acid uh, buildup takes longer to happen and that allows you to maintain good posture, good technique for a longer period of time. Muscular endurance is tested using uh, a range of different tests, but essentially you're going to ask the athlete to do as many of something as they can in one minute or until they reach fatigue, uh, whether that be something like push-ups or sit-ups. Uh, and those tests are often specific to a muscle or muscle groups. When it comes to flexibility, flexibility is the range of motion or movement at your joints and refers to your body's ability to move freely. Uh, flexibility is joint and or muscle group specific. Uh, so if you're flexible at your shoulder, that doesn't mean that you're gonna be flexible at your hip. Flexibility helps to prevent injuries. Uh, it is gonna improve your posture. It's gonna decrease back pain, maintain healthy joints uh, and improve balance during movement. This results uh, in improved movement efficiency uh, through better biomechanical movement. Uh, so in order to measure flexibility, you might use something like a sit and reach test, but as I said, each test will be specific uh, to the joint. Body composition is the different tissue types that make up a person's body and usually focuses on a person's percentage body fat, but can be used to determine bone, muscle and water composition uh, percentages as well. Now body composition is sport specific as well, uh, so uh, less fat means that you have less weight to move around, uh, allowing you to move for longer periods such as a marathon or allows you to accelerate faster in things like the 100 meter sprint or in football. Uh, however, you might want a larger body mass uh, because that means you're harder to move. And so things like wrestlers, so sumo wrestlers or NFL blockers, for example, uh, they want to be quite large so that the other person is, uh, has to exert more force in order to move them. 
Um, ideal body composition is going to be specific to the sport and can improve movement efficiency as per the examples just given. Uh, body composition is tested uh, by skin folds or by using underwater weighing. When it comes to testing and performance, uh, testing is only good at predicting performance when it is specific to the sport. Uh, so for example, if you do strength testing, muscular strength testing uh, for a weightlifter, it's going to be really good at predicting performance. Uh, if you do cardiorespiratory endurance testing for an Ironman, that's going to be really good at predicting their performance. But once you move to sports that combine multiple components, uh, especially skill-related components, uh, tests become less accurate in predicting performance. So for example, strength testing a rugby forward helps identify if he is strong, but does not tell you if he can tackle correctly, doesn't tell you if he can catch a ball, if he can do repeated movements over and over again for any you know, good length of time. Uh, this requires other testing and still will not account for uh, the ability to read the play or for following instructions from the halfback uh, and all the other things that a forward needs to do on the field to be a good player.